Hello everyone, and today we're just going to create a short module which is very useful, which I've used quite often, which searches through folders and subfolders for a file by name or file type extension. So we'll start off by importing OS. This is the miscellaneous operating system interface. It gives us access to it. So now we just define our function and we'll call it get file because that is what we are doing. And then we'll remember to call it down the bottom. So we'll type in get file again. Now inside of this function, all we need to do is create a list after we get the files by the extension that we're after. And then we're going to access and send back the ones we're looking for. And we're going to get the path of our current folder where this code is written and saved by using path equals os dot get cwd. So now this variable called path is now equal to where the file is actually being saved of this code. This will be handy for accessing all subfolders from here. So now all we're going to do is use for root directories and files in os.walk and we're going to use the path and now we are accessing all of the paths directories and the files from the path where this is saved and all subfolders so we're going to look inside of them and we're looking for the names of the files so we're going to say for names in files Actually, we're getting accessing one at a time. So do for name in files if name dot ends with and we'll put in the extension because we're going to access it by extension first. And since we're going to make this a module, we're going to put a default variable as the extension for now. So for the extension, I'll just make this equal to and that's dot jpg. Now what's very important for this extension if you're accessing multiple extension types is to make sure it is a tuple. If it is not a tuple, it will not be able to use the function ends with. This ends with function only works if you're putting in a tuple or single variables. So I'll put in our second string because we are checking for files ending with this extension type. I'll make the second one a text because that's another common one. So we take back images and text just for now. And if the file name ends with the extension which we've just given it, we'll just update the file list dot append and we'll put in the name. So we've updated it with the name of the file we're looking for. We can now print file list to make sure this is all working because we now have a list of all the files and make sure we finish running it we'll just return file list because we know as a module we're going to be returning this list once once we're done and now we we'll just save and run it and see how we're going and here we go i've got a list of all files in the folder and subfolders and just to show you this is in the lesson from image search file folder and if i look at it The images, image files which we just accessed are actually in the subfolder. Test003.jpg is just here. There. So now we've accessed all text files and image files in the paths and subfolders, which I found very helpful. Now to make this a module, we need to select what we're looking for from it and return only what we want. So we'll just add a little bit of code to make this a bit neater so we can call it and not have to worry about anything. And that's why we've got the default variables and we'll just put a few more checks in place. So now all we have to do to make this more useful is to print off every file one at a time with a number associated with it so that we can access the files using a number or a selection. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a counter. And since I'm going to add an counter, I'll just add plus one and initiate the counter here. So each time we find a file name with the number, we can add one to the counter. We can then print the string and we're going to add the string of the counter 
and what we're going to use is a Z fill function and we're going to use the number three. What this does is that it makes sure that the variable or the string that we're printing occupies three digits. So I'll just show you for now if I just run that. There we go. You can see rather than print one, two, three to number 15, it fills it out so it occupies three spaces. And I find that very neat so that when we put in our next one, put a spacer in here. And what we're going to do, we're not going to print the extension. Oh, we can actually. There's no point making it difficult. So let's just see what that looks like. And there we go, we've got now a list, which is quite easy to see, which we can access the files which we're looking for. So what to do is input a selection. Selection equals input. And we're just going to ask them, please select a file from the list. And what we'll do, we're adding zero equals all files. And we have to convert this to an integer because this is going to be a string when it comes out. And I'm going to minus one from it now. It's because we got the count set before we actually printed the names here because I like having number one as the first item in the list rather than zero. It seems more fair to people when using the program. So I've now deducted one from it. So now if the selection is not equal to minus one, that means we have um, selected a single object from the list and we haven't selected all of it. If it's zero and we've subtracted one, it'll be minus one and that means all of them. So now the selected file is equal to the item of file list, but the selected input var variable of it. And else we just return the file list. So now we'll be returning the selected in this case, otherwise we'll return the file list itself because uh, if we have not selected minus one or, or zero, sorry, or the files, we would like the entire list. And since we're going to be returning a list in this case, I'll make this a list now. So we will be returning a list of one item because this is just going to be easier to deal with in future. So when we run this search file, we always get a list of what we are looking for of the files. So let's just see if this works. And what we'll do before we return it, we'll just print and we're selected. And then again, just in case I've messed up, we'll print file list, see what we're returning. Right. Oh, of course. And down, number five. And yet we got number five. So number five is test 003. We've got that single object as we selected it. So that's that. And I'll quickly show you how to just call this, I guess, to make it useful. Now this will look a lot neater if I did that. So you got some space to now. There we go. Selector. We don't know what that is. That looks better. So I'm pretty happy with that. So now we can select the file and we click zero we get the list of all the files we're looking for by the extension. So to make this useful, we'll quickly make it, call it as a module. So we'll file new, and I'll quickly just save it into the folder. Call search. And what we'll do, we'll make sure it's not being run from inside here. Make sure doing it properly so we can go import and the file name is called search file and the module or in the function inside of it is called get file so we're just going to run search file dot get file and we can make item equals and we're going to print item. There we go, and that's printed the second time. Just 
to show item equals. It's always good to for debugging. Let's go again. There we go, item equals. You can see we're getting that. So now what we do if we want to call it, we can make extension equal to JPG. And run it. And now we're getting only the image files. We can make it equal to text. So now we're getting only the text files. And if we make it a tuple, we can get whatever we want. There we go. And if you'd like to search through more folders, you can change the path. You can change it to your C drive and search your whole C drive if you'd like. And then you can access your file by your name. So this could be quite useful in how you use it. Um, in the case of uh, image manipulation, the main reason I'll use it is to check convert PNGs to JPGs and etc. stuff like that or change names of multiple files to make it easier rather than doing it myself and accessing many hundreds or thousands of images at once or quickly. So I don't know, hope you find this useful. Other than that, um, subscribe. There's a $1,000 giveaway in the last video I made. So subscribe and just comment on that video if you want to try to win a bunch of stuff. Otherwise, um, stay awesome. <laughs>